Good morning, little masters, and welcome back to today's Tolkien Times. I'm the man of the West, also from the Prancing Pony podcast. Let's get started with week 61's Word Nerd Wednesday. As with our previous Word Nerd Wednesdays, I'll pick a word or two from the other episodes that week and do a deep dive. This time, we'll start by looking at a term from last week's Third Age Thursday reading in Bilbo's song about Eärendil, the Flamifer of Western S. Now, one of the things that I find super interesting about Tolkien's use of the word flamifer is that it is in Latin, which is not typically a source that Tolkien goes to for his nomenclature. And the authors of Ring of Words notice the same thing, and they say this in their entry for the word flamifer. Flamifer is unusual in being a Tolkien coinage with Latin rather than German roots, though this is appropriate in the context of the rather post-Renaissance vocabulary of the poem. The Latin word flamifer literally means flame bearer. It sits easily with a small group of English words of this type, such as aquifer, water bearer, conifer, cone bearer, crucifer, cross bearer, signifer, standard bearer, and the name lucifer, literally light bearer, which they point out was long used as a name for the morning star, although now avoided because of its satanic associations. The authors of Ring of Words also suggest that Tolkien's use, or rather Bilbo's use, of Latin here is appropriate in the context of the rather post-Renaissance vocabulary of the poem. Now, of course, Tolkien used Latin to coin this particular word, which has no precedent in English, for a reason. But what was that reason? Well, if Tolkien wanted to use a Latin root name to go with other Latin root words in this poem, he couldn't really choose Lucifer, light bearer, because that name now evokes precisely the wrong associations for the subject of this poem. So even though that would be the right literal word, light bearer, right? I mean, he's got the Silmaril. The associations with the church lady's favorite scapegoat, could it be Satan? are sufficient reason for Tolkien to choose to coin a new word. And I apologize to anybody who's never watched Saturday Night Live uh, years and years ago. But why choose one that's so close to Lucifer in form and meaning? Well, Sean wondered about this back in episode 141, and he was surmising, if I had to guess why, I'd say he's trying to offer his readers a new Latin root word to use for the Morning Star that allows us to reclaim it as a symbol of hope and light and distance it from its associations with the fall of Satan. A recovery of the symbol of hope? A clear view on the morning star, maybe? I really liked what Sean had to say about this. And knowing how often Tolkien tried to recover original meanings, I'm going to fully buy into that idea. Now, we're also going to go ahead and take a little bit of time to cover some of the words we looked at in the Song of Eärendil, as the episode was long enough last week, even without the word nerdery. First up, we read about Elwing and how more bright than light of diamond the fire upon her carcanet. Now, while I did mention it last week, I want to just kind of go over it a little bit more. Carcanet is an archaic English word. It dates back to 1530, but it has its origins in Middle French, where it means an ornamental collar or necklace, usually of gold or set with jewels. Then we read, From other world beyond the sea, there strong and free a storm arose, a wind of power in Tarmanel. In his unfinished index, Tolkien defines Tarmanel as high heaven, region of wind, suggesting that Manwe himself may have blown this wind, like I talked about. The word is pretty clearly made up of the elements tar, as in high, royal, noble, right? Anatar, lord of gifts, Kementari, queen of the earth, and all the tar kings and queens of Numenor, as well as the element menel, meaning firmament or heavens. And we see that in Menel Tarma, the pillar of heaven, Meneldil, the lover of the heavens, and more. Then we read that through Evernight he back was born on black and roaring waves. Well, Evernight only appears here in the Eärendilinwë, so it's hard to say with any certainty, but if I had to hazard a guess, I'd say it would be the shadowy seas. After the self-exile of the Noldor, we read, In that time also, which songs call Nurtale Valinorva, the hiding of Valinor, the enchanted isles were set, and all the seas about them were filled with shadows and bewilderment. And these isles were strung as a net in the shadowy seas from the north to the south before Tolerasea, the lonely isle, is reached by one sailing west. Hardly might any vessel pass between them, for in the dangerous sounds the waves sighed forever upon dark rocks shrouded in mist. And in the twilight a great weariness came upon mariners and a loathing of the sea. But all that ever set foot upon the islands were there entrapped and slept until the change of the world." That would be a disturbing way to wake up from a nap. 
Well, then we read that he sailed until he heard on strands of pearl where ends the world, the music long. That's a reference to Alcolonde. Now, even though the word isn't in the song, I wanted to remind you of its word nerdery. The londe element is something that we've talked about a few times here. It means harbor or haven. Uh, we saw that in the haven built by Aldarian named Vinyalonde, New Haven, or his ship, the Hirolonde, which is haven finder. Now, the alqua element isn't seen anywhere else, but the appendix to the Silmarillion clearly and explicitly tells us that it means swan. Now, we read next that uh, Eärendil escaped and arrived to Elvenholm beneath the hill of Ilmarin. Well, in his unfinished index, Tolkien says that Ilmarin is Quenya for Mansion of the High Heirs, the dwelling of Manwe and Varda. So the hill of Ilmarin must mean Teniquitil or Oyolose. Christopher Tolkien, in the appendix to the Silmarillion, says that Ilmarin is related to words like Ilmare, handmaiden to Queen Varda, and Ilmen, which is the part of the heavens where the stars are. Now, interestingly, when these dwellings are referenced the only other time in the Legendarium, in Galadriel's Lament, they're actually called Oromardi, which means lofty halls. Now, at last we read that after his arrival, they clothed him then in elven white and seven lights before him sent, as through the Katakirian to hidden land forlorn he went. The Katakirian was the part of the land of the Valar near the ravine known as the Kalakiria, the cleft of light from Kala, meaning light, as in Kalakwendi, and Kilia, meaning cleft or gorge. Now, we don't really see the Quenya Kilia element anywhere else, but its cinder incognate is Kirith, as in Kirithungal, and so on. And I think that just about covers most of the new words from the second half of the Eärendilinwe. And folks, that's it for today's Word Nerd Wednesday. But come back next week as we wander the wide, wild, wonderful world of words weekly on Wednesdays. And if there's a word you want to know more about, please let me know by emailing barlaman at theprancingponypodcast.com. Please visit patreon.com slash Tolkien Times to learn how you can support the show, get an ad-free feed, a monthly hangout with me, a bonus weekly episode, and more. And then join me again tomorrow on today's Tolkien Times for Third Age Thursday. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe, follow or subscribe in your podcast apps, and follow at Tolkien Times on all your social media. Finally, as Faramir says, go with the goodwill of all good men. <laughs>